want to take you back to when you were a kid growing up to start. You were bullied as a kid. You didn't have many friends growing up. Well, I was just like bouncing around, you know, um, changing a lot of schools and um, dad went to jail. It was kind of like, you know, all these things. So it kind of sucked. And then like right when I was getting popular, I was going to have a good year, I got thrown in jail. So, it was... so let's start with the dad. What happened when he told you he's going to prison? He's riding in the car and uh, he never really goes with us to school. And I was wondering like what was going on, if we're going to Disneyland or like something, because occasionally it pulls out of school to do cool shit. And um, yeah, we, uh, we pulled into the school and he kind of like spit it out, you know, boys, I'm going to jail. And it was, it was more traumatic because for like a year or two, everybody was like, oh, your dad's going to jail. And my dad was always telling me like, there's no chance I'm going to jail. He's like this eternal optimist. I think the hardest part of it was knowing that I had to go into school and like face all the kids after, you know, a year of saying that he's not going to jail and then being wrong and looking like an idiot. Which if that's not already devastating enough for a kid to just find out his dad's going to prison. Well, I would have expected them at least give me the f day off school, you know? I right. was like, man, it was tough because he told me and then, you know, two minutes later, he's like, well, you got to go, you know, you're going to be late for school. And I'm like, fuck, man. Describe what your dad was like as a little league coach. Man, he was a f***ing maniac. We would practice literally like two, three hours a day, six, seven days a week. And you're how old? This is when I was like seven, eight. Jake Owen, that country singer, he was on my little league team. We would always win because we would just out practice and out play everybody else. And in what ways did he teach you to do whatever it takes to win? Winning was so important to him that I think that that just was one of the things that got ingrained in me. You know, he was the no points for second place type of guy. Tell about the making the bed lesson. My mom asked me to make my bed and I said, uh, you know, dad doesn't make his bed and so, she says, honey, you know, why don't you, you know, show them how to make the bed. And my dad's like, if you're making 10000 an hour, why the f*** would you make your bed when you can pay somebody $15 an hour? It's not like a typical lesson for an eight-year-old, but it made sense, you know? And it, and it carries through in life, too. Like, spend your time doing work that makes you the most amount of money. Don't do bullshit work that you could, you know, pay somebody else to do. You know, I picked that up and I took that on board, you know, like the chef's upstairs. I mean, that saves a lot of time. Really? Yeah. I just had this conversation with my friend the other day. I'm like, you're worth $500 million. Get a f chef like what are you doing to me it was so obvious but i think there's a lot of guys that just i don't know man there's not really like a manual on how to be rich um but maybe there should be so your kid growing up how many schools did you go to i don't remember how many total but i do know that i did seven um in like i think five years got kicked out of two no i got kicked out of three <laughs> so we went to provo then we went back to tampa and then back to uh, Sandy, Salt Lake-ish. And you get called out of a classroom one, one day. Yeah, I think it was like the first day of school. And they asked me if I had a gun in the car and I was like, yeah, like a fucking idiot. I thought like being honest would get you, you know, like, okay, this guy's like being honest. They don't give a f And it was that moment that effectively split up the family, right? Yep. How did you guys kind of get through that? I mean, I joined the military shortly thereafter and um, they moved back to Tampa. Was that hard for you at the time, knowing that kind of your actions are leading to this happening? I didn't care as much about that as I did that I was like finally, you know, in a school that I had friends at, I was the cool kid. It got, you know, it was like the first time in my life I remember like looking forward to going to school, you know? And was there a point where you thought you're gonna end up being there for a while? I, I mean, in, in jail? Yeah, I mean, there was certainly that possibility. I mean, it was a you know serious charge, so I didn't I didn't know how it was gonna go. It was just like after I'd been in for three weeks, they basically just told me my I guess uh, my lawyer had made a deal, and, and then you know I got time served. But then I couldn't I couldn't come I couldn't stay or come back to the state of Utah, which I didn't know was really like a possible thing. But yeah, why at that time did you kind of hate your family then? I didn't really hate them around my senior year. I just didn't really spend much time with them. Having your father's respect was really important to you, right? Um, yeah, I would say that, you know, that was definitely something that I cared about. It wasn't, my senior year wasn't really something I was thinking too much about, but it was one of the reasons I went in the military. Why? 
Well, that's what he did. Like he went in the military and that was kind of like his salvation. Um, and so it was either community college or that. So it didn't seem like much of a choice.